Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ford Woodman, and for my pricing strategy class presentation, I'm going to be talking about how a hoodie and a belt became the same price. Um, so if this isn't obvious at a glance, the company I'm going to be talking about, or at least an example, is going to be Gucci. Um, and these are two of the products that I found just on their website I did for their belts. I found the most expensive belt, men's belt they had on their website available um, versus one of the least expensive sweatshirts. Um, and if there's an obvious, the price of the sweat of the belt, which is made of a very luxurious alligator skin material, um, is $1,500. And the hoodie, which is made of 100% cotton, um, is uh, $1,350. So for a $150 price difference, what is the difference between these two goods? Because one is a really luxurious alligator skin. The other is a 100% cotton. Well, what's the difference between a Gucci hoodie and a regular hoodie? At a price distance, it's pretty dramatic. It's about $1,300. This is a brand I found called Cotton Mill, which makes 100% cotton sweatshirts. Um, this one they have is one of their cheaper ones at $82. It's got, I believe, about 13 colors. Um, they have more on their website. Um, versus the Gucci hoodie. Um, both of these, again, are 100% cotton. Um, the one is, this Gucci one is made in Italy. Um, but for a price difference of $1,300, where does that come from? Well, I talked with a Nordstrom men's buyer and he talked about cotton a little bit. Um, and he explains that there is a degree of cotton quality that there is a difference of each each product that you buy in general um, you can generally tell when when there's a higher quality cotton versus a lower quality just based on the feel if it tears easily if it stretches easily um, so there is a difference between these two qualities of cotton between these uh, sweatshirts but it's not nearly large enough to account for a thirteen hundred dollar difference so where does this difference come from well to understand how and where the difference comes from, we need to talk about the emergence of Gucci as a brand. So Gucci as a brand was founded by Guccio Gucci, an awesome Italian name, by the way. Um, and he started the company without knowing it as a margin oriented company, which is one that has very low or very high margins for very low volume. Um, this didn't really change as the company went on in terms of the high margins, but this did evolve as the company evolved. Um, so it was originally founded uh, when Guccio was working at a hotel and noticed all the luxurious clothing coming in and he wanted to do something similar. So he went back to his town of Tuscany and he knew that there was a um, a lack of, of fashion industry clothing brands in Tuscany. And while it was a very high-end city in general, there were lots of celebrities, lots of royalties coming in to visit. Um, he wanted to start his brand there. And so what he did was he created a brand for equestrians, because that's what these high-end celebrities and royalty came when they did when they came to Tuscany was they rode horses. Horses were seen as a very high-end, um, royal, luxurious experience, um, even though they used to be a peasant thing. Um, but in the mid 1900s, or the, the excuse me, the early 1900s, it was a very high-end thing to do. And so he was developing, um, combining this idea of really luxurious-looking goods with high-quality Italian craftsmanship, and he was able to create this really luxurious equestrian brand. This went on until the mid 1940s, um, until the, excuse me, the early 1940s. Um, and over that time, they started selling more leather, import leather goods such as their belts, handbags. Um, they even started selling their their iconic loafer which was a callback to where they came from um, with this. Uh, if you notice on all their Gucci loafers, they have this little silver buckle on top, and that's actually a horse riding buckle. Um, it's not in the photo, unfortunately, that I found, um, but that's what that is. Um, now, in the, in the early 1940s, World War II is happening, and the League of Nations actually placed trade embargoes on Italy um, due to Mussolini being in power, and it was basically impossible to get this high-quality leather that Gucci was originally using. So instead of just tapping out and bowing out, what they did is they actually used what they had, which was woven hemp. This is actually the start of that iconic Gucci um, uh, logo comes in, the, the double Gs next to each other, which is the, the background of the presentation, and that, that red and blue square right there um, is this emergence of the hemp weave for the purses. And this is when we actually see Gucci starting to utilize some common misconceptions and biases that are associated with high quality goods, which is the price and quality bias. Um, originally, uh, Gucci had been using really high quality leathers to sell really high quality and high, um, high priced products. And so when the 1940s were hitting and this embargo hit, they switched from this hemp to this hemp weave people still associated the, the Gucci products with high quality, even though it was a much lower quality product. So he was able to sell 
his handbags and belts made with this woven hemp material and logo um, for a much lower cost for the same profit that he was making and the, the same price. Um, and so this is when we start seeing this shift from Gucci understanding that he's making a leather high quality goods to he's actually selling a brand. Now, next, we see the Sloanification of Gucci. Gucci going from a margin-oriented company to a Sloanism-oriented company. Um, mainly, we can see the utilization of three different strategies. Um, the first one being a car for every purpose. Um, now, granted, Gucci doesn't sell cars, but ironically, they do sell car wraps. And that's kind of what I'm getting at here. We can see from this Gucci website up uh, tab up there, they sell a wide variety of goods. It's no longer just equestrian goods. Uh, handbags and belts and shoes. We have men's clothing, women's clothing, children's clothing. You can buy jewelry. You can buy rings, watches, earrings, um, nose piercings. Uh, you can buy beauty care products in terms of perfume and cologne or even skincare like lotions, lotion products, smelling lotion products that are outrageously high priced. Um, even decor and lifestyle. You can buy uh, drapes. You can buy Gucci wallpaper. You can buy Gucci pillows, Gucci throw rugs, Gucci couches. Even I saw Gucci picnic baskets and goofy travel sets. The most insane of them being, of course, the Gucci pets that you can see in the bottom right corner, which is you can now dress your pets up with Gucci clothing as if it wasn't expensive enough. Um, and then we see on the right side, this vault, which is actually, I'm going to get at that with the plan adolescence. So we see that Gucci is really making a Gucci product for every purpose imaginable. No matter where you're going, you can always be wearing Gucci. Next, we talk about the fashionization of the products. That was what Gucci did a really good job of. This are not just selling a product. You're not selling clothing. You're selling success. This scarf was one of the first scarves that Gucci ever actually made. Um, and it was a present for the Princess of Monaco for visiting one of their stores in the 1960s and doing a huge shopping spree. Um, they wanted to do something and thanks for her. And so she requested a handmade scarf. It had, I believe, 57 different kinds of flowers on it. And when people saw that they were making scarves, now I want a scarf, I want a scarf. Now it's just, it's a silk scarf with the Gucci logo and flowers on it, but it's sort of for an outrageously high price. And we see that now it's no longer just buying Gucci, you're buying the status. It used to be high-end celebrities bought Gucci because they could afford it, but now we're seeing a shift of you're buying high-end Gucci products because you're going to be a celebrity. If, if I want to be someone big, I buy Gucci because people see me and they go, oh, he's wearing Gucci. He's got to be a celebrity. He's got to be an official. He's got to be doing something that he's got a lot of money because he can afford Gucci products. Last, we have the plan at obsolescence, which I think Gucci does outstandingly well. They they utilize the original concepts of plan obsolescence. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, where basically you're making new products and whatever you're making is new is in fashion. It's hip. It's cool. The old stuff isn't in fashion anymore. You don't need it. So you always have to buy new stuff. Um, they do that with their fashion shows. There's the very famous Gucci fashion shows in Paris and Milan. If you get the chance, you should look at some of the clothing from these these shows because they're outrageously high priced and they're they're stuff that you would never wear in public. It, it's stuff like shirts without a front, um, but they're it's made of some material that has like mesh in the front. You would never wear that in public necessarily, but they wear them in fashion shows and and they can set these outrageous fashion standards because. When you see Gucci, you think high fashion, you think quality. You don't know, you don't care what they're doing, but if Gucci does it, it's gotta be cool. Well, not only that, but I was again talking to this Nordstrom executive and he was telling me that what Gucci does is their old products, they burn. Whatever they don't sell that year, they burn. So now you're not only restricting, you're not only having the new products coming in that are new and fashionably cool, but the old products are collector's items because there's only a limited amount of being produced. If they only produced, certain amounts every year and whatever doesn't get sold is burned. Now you have one in like a thousand items. And this is what we're getting to with the vault is I checked out the Gucci vault. And what it is, is a collection of Gucci clothes over the years, decades ago. I mean, I saw a handbag from the 1960s being sold for like $6,000. And it all it is is just an old bag. And in theory, most products, when they age, they age like vinegar, which is to say, get more vinegary. But it seems Gucci products age like wine. I guess the, a better analogy would be they, they age like milk. Um, but Gucci products age like wine. They restrict the number of these products out there in available to purchase for the common person to make it so the old ones are collector's items. They're cool. They're retro. They're hard to get, so they're more expensive. And the newer products are what's fashionable, what's cool. If you don't have what's in, you're not wearing the right Gucci stuff. Um, if you're not wearing Gucci, you're not cool. And so now they get to raise the prices on those as well. So Gucci is able to raise prices on both the front 
and the back end of their products by limiting the supply and being the leaders of the fashion industry. I mean, when we look at these sweaters, what are you really buying? We look at a Gucci sweater, for example, the ones on the left, all these products that you see here are 100% cotton. Now there's polyester woven into them, but it's like 3% polyester and that's mainly for the designs or the pressing of the logos. $3,000 universal hoodies, Gucci sweater, a purple Gucci hoodie for $2,000, a, a Gucci sweatshirt um, for $1,500. Mind you, it's more material on the sweatshirt because of the hood, but it's cheaper because it's not as exclusive. I mean, there's a Marilyn, there's a Marilyn Monroe logo on the back, but it's not as cool as the University Studios one. It's the, the colors on it is crazy and stuff. And so what are you really buying? Well, on the right side, we see here are two Adidas shirts but they're dramatically different priced. We see the one on the top right is the traditional Adidas logo and the Adidas shirt, 100% cotton. Again, it's not as high quality cotton as Gucci, but for the price point that we're looking at, it's way too different of a price for two similar of our product. The only difference between these two being really is one has the word Gucci in front and the other just says Adidas. They're both Adidas products, but one's a Gucci Adidas collab for almost $730 more expensive. I mean, the, the this shirt's on sale $25 to $15, and this Gucci t-shirt with just the logo on the front is sold for $750. So when you're buying a product from Gucci, what are you buying? The logo. When you buy a Gucci product, you're not just buying a luxury good anymore. You're not just buying a Gucci belt, a Gucci handbag. You're buying the Gucci logo. Look at our original two goods. We have the one on the left, at least for me, it's the left, the, the belt. It's a hand, it's a, and Gucci products are typically handcrafted. So they're leather products, a handcrafted leather belt or machine made, whatever, made with alligator skin and a gold logo on the front, the gold buckle, um, a much higher quality product and a much more luxurious materials gone in versus our 100% cotton hoodie. Now, again, it's good cotton, but it's not $1,300 worth of good cotton. And the difference between these two products is the size of the logo. The, the Gucci belt is a much more low-key, less accentuated, more classy look, whereas the big box logo sweatshirt, you walking around with a huge Gucci logo on your chest, and everyone knows you're wearing Gucci. Now, no one knows you're wearing Gucci unless you have your shirt tucked in with the belt, but if you're wearing a sweatshirt, everyone knows you're wearing Gucci. If there's one takeaway from this entire thing, if there's if there's one thing you can take away from buying any sort of luxury products, not to say luxury products are bad, the Gucci belts can be really good because and Gucci bags because they're made with really high quality leather. Gucci uses like top three percent leather in the world in terms of quality is all Gucci uses for their leather products, and and you can still get handcrafted Gucci products out there. But when you're buying a Gucci product and you're buying any sort of luxury good, you always need to remember. At the end of the day, what you're buying is a logo. Thank you for your time and here are my references.